popularized by the Star Wars movies, it's not surprising that Hasbro has sold tens of thousands of these inexpensive lightsabers, which can be had in some markets for as little as $25. And it's a pretty good bargain because you get a lightsaber with scrolling effects that can change colors, swing effects, and even flash on clash. I thought it'd be interesting to take a closer look at what these things look like on the inside. So let's go to the bench and see what we've got. If you have one of these lightsabers and you're thinking of taking it apart for yourself, I have to warn you, it's quite a job. They're held together with screws, compression fittings, and glue, which is a good thing because they are designed to take quite a beating. If you do manage to get it apart, here's what you'll find. The battery pack, the speaker at the end which faces this way, and the function switch. Uh, this is the switch which has three positions. One is totally off. The middle position is for the display mode in the store. This is the position that allows you to uh, press the on and off switch and get a few seconds demonstration of, of what the uh, lightsaber does. And then the full on position which allows you to use the lightsaber continuously. This is the on and off switch, which ignites the uh, lightsaber uh, LEDs in the blade. And this is the circuitry that controls the colors and the scrolling effects and uh, the various sound effects for the lightsaber. There are two components that are of particular interest. One is the swing sensor, and that's this little black solenoid here. If you tap it, it creates the swishing sound. The other is the little green cylinder here, which is the clash sensor. It creates flashes when the blade is struck. Here's an extreme close-up of what the inside of the clash sensor looks like. It's a very soft spring with a weight at the end that surrounds a metal conductor. When the blade is struck, the spring vibrates making multiple contacts with the center conductor and this creates the multiple flashes from a single strike. Here's a close-up of the swing sensor. It has two plates with a ball bearing between them. Normally the bearing makes contacts with both plates keeping the sound at a steady level. When you swing the lightsaber the ball moves one way or the other breaking the contact which signals the circuitry to create the swishing sound. Let's turn it off so you can see how the blade itself is constructed. The first element is the pre-printed circuit board that holds the LEDs that light up. On the back side is, are the conductors, which you can see on a regular circuit board. Next, we have a thin diffuser tube, which goes over this. There are transparent rings around this tube further on, which space it down the center of the denser outer diffuser tube. These are necessary to even out the light from these. Without these diffusers, you just see a bunch of point lights down it. These help to blend the light together a little bit. Finally, on the outside, you have the transparent outer shell, which is what takes the beating when you're clobbering on each other. If you turn the circuit board over, you're not going to see much. All there are are two small capacitors, and you can see the traces from the printed circuit. And that's pretty much all there is. I hope you enjoyed this little video about uh, lightsabers and how they work. And as always, thank you for watching. Oh yeah, and if you get the chance, I hope you'll stop by my main website at waynesthisandthat.com. I have a much bigger page about lightsabers and many other subjects I think you'll like.